Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving deep into ancient mysteries that keep historians up at night. We've got pyramids that might not be pyramids, ancient texts that sound like alien invasions, and a skull that's older than time itself, or maybe not. So buckle up, because we're about to embark on a wild ride through history's most baffling mysteries. All right, let's talk about pyramids, baby. Everybody loves a good pyramid, right? The Egyptians, the Mayans, even those aliens, some people believe built them. Pyramids are cool. But what about a pyramid in Bosnia? Yeah, you heard that right. There's this hill in Bosnia, and this guy, Samir Osmanagic, he takes one look at it and says, hold my beer, that's not a hill, that's a pyramid. A 32,000 year old pyramid, no less. Older than the pyramids in Egypt, older than civilization itself. Now, I'm all for challenging conventional thinking, but this is some next level stuff. So, Osmanagic, he starts digging, convinced he's about to unearth the find of the century. 15 years later, guess what he's found? Not a damn thing. No chambers, no hieroglyphs, no ancient alien artifacts, just dirt. But that doesn't stop the tourists, oh no. People flock from all over, convinced the pyramid has healing powers. They crawl through these tunnels, convinced it'll cure their allergies. Placebo effect is a hell of a drug, man. All right, so we've all heard the stories, right? Ancient civilizations more advanced than our own, wiped out in some cataclysmic event. But what if that event was a nuclear war? I know, I know, sounds crazy, right? But hear me out. There are these ancient Hindu texts, the Vedas, and they describe these epic battles with weapons of unimaginable power. We're talking flying machines, explosions that shake the heavens, and a devastating fire that rain down from the sky. Sounds a lot like our modern descriptions of nuclear weapons, doesn't it? And it's not just the Vedas. There are ancient cities like Mohenjo-Daro in Pakistan, where the bricks are literally fused together, vitrified, as if exposed to extreme heat. Some researchers believe the radiation levels in these areas are unusually high. Coincidence? Maybe. Or maybe it's evidence of an ancient nuclear war. Now, the mainstream scientific community, they're not buying it. They say the texts are allegorical, the explosions were volcanic eruptions, and the radiation is naturally occurring. Let's face it, museums are full of amazing artifacts, treasures from the past that tell incredible stories. But sometimes those stories are, well, less than true. Take the tiara of Cytophernes, for example. This thing was a masterpiece, a golden crown adorned with intricate scenes of gods and goddesses, supposedly crafted for a Scythian king in the third century BC. The Louvre Museum in Paris, they were over the moon when they got their hands on this thing. It was the crown jewel of their collection, a testament to the skill and artistry of the ancient world. They paid a king's ransom for it, and for years it was the star attraction. But then, cracks started to appear, literally. The gold started to tarnish, the details began to fade, and the Louvre realized they'd been had. The tiara of Cytophernes wasn't a 2,300-year-old masterpiece. It was a 19th-century fake, expertly crafted by a group of con artists. Turns out, a talented goldsmith named Israel Ruchomovsky was the mastermind behind the whole thing. He'd studied ancient art, mastered the techniques, and created a forgery so convincing that he fooled the greatest art experts in the world. All right, let's talk about Vikings, those badass seafaring warriors who raided and pillaged their way across Europe. History tells us they made it to Iceland, Greenland, even North America centuries before Columbus. But what if they ventured even further, like Oklahoma? Yeah, you heard that right, Oklahoma. There's this massive sandstone slab out there, the Heaven or Runestone, and it's covered in these strange carvings. Some people, they look at those carvings and they see runes, the ancient alphabet used by the Vikings. And not just any runes, they say, but runes that tell the story of a Viking expedition to the area in the 11th century. Now, I'm all for a good Viking adventure story, but this one's a bit of a stretch, even for me. See, most scholars, they look at the Heaven or Runestone and they see, well, they see scratches, random markings made by erosion or 
maybe even by Native Americans. They say the runes are too crude, too poorly formed to be genuine. But hey, that doesn't stop the believers, does it? All right, let's get into some religious mysteries, shall we? The kind of stuff that makes you question your beliefs or maybe just makes you scratch your head and say, what the... The veil of Manopello is one of those mysteries. Imagine a piece of cloth, sheer as silk, and on it an image of a man's face. Not just any man, mind you, but a man with a beard, long hair, and piercing eyes. A face that millions around the world would recognize as Jesus Christ. That's the veil of Manapello, a relic held in a church in Italy, revered by some as the actual cloth that covered Jesus' face after his crucifixion. They say the image on the veil is miraculously imprinted, a divine selfie from the Son of God himself. Now, the Catholic Church, they're not officially endorsing this thing, but they're not exactly denying it either. They're kind of like, hey, if you want to believe it's the real deal, that's your prerogative, which, let's be honest, is pretty much their stance on most things. Okay, let's talk about evolution, baby. That whole survival of the fittest monkeys-to-man thing. It's the foundation of modern biology, right? But what if I told you there's a skull out there that throws the whole theory into question? Enter the Calavera skull, a human skull unearthed in California in 1866. Now this wasn't just any old skull, this thing was old, like really old. So old, in fact, that it predated the existence of Homo sapiens, our direct ancestors. We're talking hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of years old. Now, if the Calavera skull was legit, it would mean rewriting the entire history of human evolution. It would mean that modern humans, or at least a version of us, existed far earlier than we ever thought possible. It would be huge. But there's a problem, a big one. The Calavera skull was a hoax, a big, fat, elaborate hoax. Turns out, a couple of miners, they thought it would be hilarious to plant this skull taken from a nearby Native American burial ground and see if anyone would fall for it. And fall for it, they did. Josiah Whitney, a respected geologist, he became convinced the skull was the real deal. He staked his reputation on it, wrote papers about it, the whole nine yards. All right, let's head back to Egypt, shall we? Specifically to the Giza Plateau, home of the Great Pyramid and its enigmatic companion, the Sphinx. You know the one, giant lion body, human head, missing a nose thanks to some overzealous Napoleon soldier? Or maybe it was just erosion, who knows? The Sphinx, man. It's been standing guard over the pyramids for millennia, staring out at the desert with those enigmatic eyes. It's one of the most recognizable monuments on Earth, yet we know surprisingly little about it. Who built it? When? And why? The official story, the one you'll find in all the textbooks, is that the Sphinx was built by the Pharaoh Khafre around 2500 BC. But there's a problem with that theory. See, the Sphinx shows signs of water erosion, the kind of erosion you'd expect to see from prolonged exposure to heavy rainfall. And the thing is, there hasn't been that kind of rainfall in Egypt for, well, for a very, very long time. Some researchers, they believe the Sphinx could be thousands of years older than we think, maybe even dating back to a time when the Sahara Desert was a lush green savanna. A time before the pyramids, before the pharaohs, before recorded history itself. All right, let's journey to the east, to ancient China, a land of emperors, dragons, and some of the most advanced astronomy in the ancient world. See, long before Galileo was gazing at the stars through his telescope, the Chinese were already mapping the heavens with astonishing accuracy. And nowhere is that more evident than in the Dunhuang star chart. A thousand-year-old scroll discovered in a sealed cave in northwest China. This thing is incredible, man. It depicts over 1,300 stars, constellations, and even a supernova, all charted with remarkable precision. What's even more amazing is that the Dunhuang star chart was created without the aid of telescopes. These ancient Chinese astronomers, they were working with the naked eye, using only their observations and their incredible knowledge of the cosmos. So, there you have it, folks. Eight ancient mysteries that continue to fascinate, intrigue, and baffle us to this day. From pyramids that might not be pyramids to star charts that defy explanation, 
These enigmas remind us that the past is a vast and mysterious place full of secrets waiting to be unlocked. Until next time, stay curious, keep questioning, and never stop exploring the mysteries of our universe.